Okay, so I'm really sorry for talking about Pac-Man again, but I cannot get this yellow devil out of my mind no matter how hard I try. Friends and longtime viewers will know I'm a huge fan of Pac-Man and will not hesitate to blab about my favorite games. One particular series I tend to see a lot of confusion on is the Championship series. And for good reason. The series is like the new Super Mario Bros. of the Pac-Man franchise. But while the games may look similar, there's plenty of differences, changes, and upgrades that set these apart. So how many versions of Pac-Man Championship Edition do you think exist? Two? Maybe three? Well, I'm happy to say there are five, mostly, unique versions, and I'm not referring to the ports like the PSP, 3DS, JM2E, and Roku version. We'll make a video on the ports another day. Today, I want to give a brief overview on each of the sequels and what they feature and give my own personal recommendations at the end. So sit back and relax, because the pack is back. First up was the original Pac-Man Championship Edition, released in 2007 on the Xbox 360. To say this game was popular is a massive understatement, as Microsoft and Namco put a lot of money up to show this isn't your grandfather's Pac-Man game. Taking advantage of the new format, which was widescreen HD television, Remember when 720p was considered HD? There are some notable elements you want to pay attention to for the first entry. So what does the first game feature? Well, there's six maps in total, with Championship being the main mode, and one music track playing throughout all of them. Gameplay revolves around you eating all the pack dots and fruit on one side to advance to the other side of stage, and thus advance further in the game in general. The more you eat without dying, the faster you go. And as a result, the amount of pellets eaten multiplies in point value. With that in mind, your objective is to go for the highest score within the time limit, and that's all. So in terms Cly can understand, it's basically Pac-Man with a timer, you eat a lot, and you go as fast as possible. The second game in the series was not Championship Edition 2, but actually Championship Edition Deluxe, or DX for short. Released in 2010 and later 2013 as a free upgrade, this version is arguably the best one among fans and critics for good reason. It took a good game and added more to it. Similar to how Mario Kart 8 Deluxe blows the original Mario Kart 8 out of the water, this is what CEVX does. So what's different? We got a new look, a banger soundtrack, roughly 15 brand new mazes, Facebook integration, which is required to 100% the game. Oh, brother. And some quality of life features, like the slow-mo, which kicks in if you're about to die and lets you make quick last-second decisions. And bombs, that launch the ghost back if you're in a pinch. <laughs> Eventually, you'll pass some sleeping ghosts, which will tag behind Pac-Man and form trains you can later eat, making for a ton of points. There's also a bigger emphasis on speed, as now the more you eat, the faster you go, and the higher your multiplier goes, shown by the speed meter and trail respectively. Lest I forget to mention the plethora of missions and modes to keep you busy if you're not much of a high score hunter. Again, there's so much here that the original looks like a tech demo now. So is it possible to top perfection? No. Released in 2016, Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 is technically the third game in the series, but is a follow-up to the first game. Mechanics from the original make a return with the addition of new maps, music, and an adventure mode, which is basically a glorified mission mode with the occasional boss. But now there's some new tweaks to the formula. So what's different? Somehow the game gets even faster, and to compensate, they added a break. This is useful for when you know a ghost is going to go one way, but instead of waggling back and forth like an idiot, you can hit the brakes and let them on their merry way. Oh my god. Most important is how you progress from stage to stage. Instead of eating all the dots to make the fruit appear, you have to eat just enough to fill this part at the bottom. And once you hit the threshold, eating it takes you to the next stage, which looks pretty cool. And when using a bomb, you fly to the center of the screen instead of the ghost. Also, the slow-mo when in danger has been removed. So, depending on the difficulty, now the ghost will bounce off you a few times, get angry, and then give chase. You what? Unlike DX, the trains made by passing sleeping ghosts don't follow you, but now they follow their own pattern. And once a power pellet is consumed, they have to be eaten at the front of the train. And any other way has you bouncing off. There's a big emphasis on dynamic camera angles, and while they are cool, they can be a bit disorienting. Adventure mode, as stated earlier, is basically a glorified mission mode, and once you beat enough stages, you get to face off against a boss stage. 
The boss honestly doesn't do much other than insta-kill you if you take too long to beat it, so it's more of a visual spectacle than anything, but it's pretty satisfying. Oh my god. Uh, Pac-Man, that was my family- Released in 2018, Pac-Man CE2 Plus was graced upon the world. Similar to how Championship Edition was outdone by CEDX due to the sheer amount of content, CE2 is now succeeded by the Plus version, which is now a Switch-exclusive game. Yes, you heard me right. A game that was birthed due to Xbox Live Arcade and funded by Microsoft has now ended up as a Switch-exclusive. Get that out of here! True, you're not missing out on much if you already own the game, but what's so good about this version? Well, for starters, when you boot up the game, you're greeted with Championship Edition 2 and the Plus version right off the bat. CE2 is mostly unchanged with some small UI tweaks, but the Plus version is what makes this stand on its own. The theme of 2 Plus is teamwork and cooperation. There's only 6 mazes in total, and while they are reused, they have been retooled to be more fun in this format. On top of that, there's even more amazing music, raising the OSTs count to 23. I mean, come on, this is probably the most hypest thing I've ever heard. Plus, the options have been tweaked. Rather than choosing a preset for a stage, you can mix and match just about everything. And the addition of the dots bopping to the beat of the music is pretty cool in my opinion. And yes, once again, the rules have been changed slightly. Now when you eat a power pellet, not only do you have to hit the ghost from the front, but also the back. The bosses have been revamped to be more of a threat than some omnipresent jerk watching you like in CE2. Eat all the dots, get the power pellet, bash the boss, then rinse and repeat. Oh hey, and the slow-mo effect from CEDX makes a return. As someone who's played this solo and with a real human, that being my younger brother who is just as good as Pac-Man as me, IRL co-op is the best way to play, and it's a shame there's no online modes because there's even more unique nuances in the co-op mode that's not possible in the single-player co-op mode, like the ability to save a friend if they get caught since you don't instantly die. Now, how do you top a game that has just about everything? Well, you strip it all away, of course. Released in 2020, the Namcot collection of games was first sold in Japan, then worldwide, shortly after they heard me banging on their office doors. Commonly referred to as the CED make, or Famicom version, CE NES stands apart from the others in more ways than one. This is technically a remake of the first CE game featuring only two mazes via normal and extra mode. And to all informed viewers, I know this game existed over a decade ago as a fan game, but I'm talking about its official release. This could be personal preference, but the less is more approach with this game makes it a genuine blast to play. There's no trains, brakes, or other advanced mechanics. Just eat as much as you can, as fast as you can. Hey! This got them fake. I gotta get out of here. I used to be addicted to this game when it first came out. High score hunting trying to set the world record. And while I think I'm close, I know I'm not that guy. To make it worth your while, there's achievements like CE, and completing them will grant you some completionist goodies. I won't spoil them, but they're all pretty cool for an NES game. So what makes this version so special? While the gameplay is more simplified than even the original CE version, its charm lies in the gameplay that demands to be mastered. I can't go into too much detail, but when you eat a power pellet, there's an invisible timer for how long the ghost stays scared. Simple enough, right? Well, if that invisible timer is still active when you eat another power pellet, you can theoretically keep this going indefinitely, and all the ghosts you eat will keep multiplying in value until they are maxed out at 3200 points each. So now the game is a big risk reward. Do I finish the stages and move on? Or do I fight to keep this combo going, risking it all for another juicy 3200 points? All in all, I can't praise this game enough, so all I can say is, please get it. So now that we covered all the mainline games, let's discuss my recommendations as to which game you should play or show up to others who are new to the series. CE is an amazing start, 
The game is simple and extremely faithful while being flashy and fun for the modern age. I would recommend this to people wanting to get into modern Pac-Man games or haven't played one in a long time. Long story short, it won't overwhelm a new player. This game is available on the Pac-Man Museum Plus collection on just about every platform. Pros? It's simple and extremely faithful while being modern. Cons? It's very lead on content and gets a bit repetitive if that's all you have. CEDX is usually hailed as the best version and for good reason. There's more everything! The addition of Ghost Trains adds another layer of skill to the mix and quality of life features like bombs and slow-mo help keep the pace of the game going. Spectacle aside, this is the best version with lots of content to keep you busy for a long time. This game is available on Steam and is usually always on sale. Pros, it amps up the skill and there's lots of freedom. It's pretty much peak. Cons, it's a bit messy and it's a pain to unlock everything. CE2 is very different from the past games and I would recommend this to a more intermediate player due to how many rules have been changed. The game is much faster, flashier, and easier to play. And while this one has the most content, don't let that fool you. The real fun here is the score attack mode. This game is available on all modern platforms, but I would not suggest the Switch version. Pros, much faster and flashier. Cons, sacrifices freedom for very strict gameplay. 2 Plus is a minor upgrade, but it's the best version of CE2 based on how complete it is. It has all the music, stages, and improved UI to make for a good time. Again, I would only recommend this to players who don't own CE2 on PC or past consoles already. The plus content is very minimal, and if you don't have a friend to play with, you're essentially missing out on half the fun. But don't let that stop you. Just remember that at the time of this video, it's a Switch exclusive, but let's hope and pray it comes to another platform in the future. Pros? It's the best version of the game, but I would only recommend it to new players who don't own it already. Cons, very minimal amount of content added to the game. And if you don't have a friend to play this, you're not going to get the full enjoyment out of it. CENES is my personal favorite recommendation out of all these games. It's hard to put my finger on it, but when you play it for yourself, there's this aha moment of wow, Pac-Man feels good to control. Not to mention the power pellets last a tad bit longer, leading you to get some crazy combos. It's extremely fast and refined, with a big emphasis on routing and freedom. It mimics the CE version without sacrificing its core design, but rather stands on its own. And it works on a real Famicom. The only thing holding it back is that it's only legally purchasable in the collection, but if you know how to use the internet, you can extract the ROM and put it in an emulator or EverDrive. Pros? Extremely fast and refined with a big emphasis on routing and freedom. Mimics the original game, but keeps adding on to its own to make it stand by itself. Cons? Only legally available via the Namcot collection, which is like 20 bucks. Usually it goes down to 10 on a sale, but the ROM itself is easy to find online. It also has a built-in rewind, so catching cheaters is kind of hard to spot. And that's my summary of all the mainline Championship Edition games. I hope I did a good job of explaining this as I really wanted people to see why this series is so beloved to me and show the cool nuances between different versions. There's a lot of details I had to skip out on for the sake of time, but I do plan to cover each of these games individually in the future. So let me know if you'd be interested in that sort of thing. With that, I'd like to say thank you all for watching, and remember, stay foxy. Hey there! Well, I gotta say, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Uh, pretty rare for people to even make it here in the first place, so I want to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, YouTube actually recently took away my monetization features for some weird reason, so now Patreon and Ko-fi is the only way I have to support myself with uh, YouTube videos. Either way, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later. <laughs> I gotta get out of here!